Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. I'm your host, Brianna Wilson. I am a certified dementia practitioner and the founder of Bamboo Care. Today we are going to finally, finally, finally be talking about vascular dementia, okay? Now before I talk about what vascular dementia is, I always like to bring it back to just defining dementia, okay? So when we talk about dementia, dementia is just this big umbrella term to define a collection of symptoms that affect memory, thinking, behavior, and emotion in such a way that it significantly interferes with daily functioning, okay? And these symptoms can be caused by a number of different diseases or conditions. So in the case of vascular dementia, it's caused by decreased blood flow to the brain, which then causes damage to blood vessels and the vascular system. So when you hear vascular dementia, okay, your first thought should be, hmm, okay, so something is going on with the vascular system, and that's what's causing the dementia. Because when we say vascular system, what we're referring to is that network of blood vessels. Okay, and with dementia, we know that what is being impacted is the brain. And another medical term for brain is cerebro. So specifically, there's something going on with the cerebrovascular system that is causing the dementia. So something going on with that network of blood vessels in the brain that's causing the dementia. Because when blood is not flowing properly to the brain, there's going to be a disturbance in the oxygen and the nutrients that the brain is getting, okay? And certain parts of the brain are going to be impacted more than others depending on where this lack of blood flow is happening, okay? And unfortunately, since the brain cells are very sensitive to a lack of oxygen, it can then lead to brain cell death and therefore brain failure. And there can be a lot of consequences of this, okay? But one of those consequences is vascular dementia, okay? Now, vascular dementia is recognized as the second most common form of dementia. But there is this battle between vascular dementia and Lewy body dementia. So depending on what resource you're looking at, some might say that Lewy body dementia is the second most common, and some will say vascular dementia is the second most common. But honestly, guys, that part is not that important, but it is important to know that it is fairly common, okay? So now I want to talk about the risk factors for developing vascular dementia. Who is more likely to develop vascular dementia? Who is more likely to have issues with their cerebrovascular system? Who is more likely to have some kind of inefficient blood flow, lack of oxygenated blood flowing through the brain, those types of things. So one of the risk factors is age. We know that vascular dementia is most common in those aged from about 60 to 75. People who smoke, okay? Strokes are a big one, and you'll also hear them referred to as CVAs, which stand for cerebrovascular accident. Again, cerebral brain vascular, that network of blood vessels, accident. And strokes can be ischemic or hemorrhagic. And so if it's ischemic, that means that the stroke is caused by a blockage in the blood vessel, okay? If it's hemorrhagic, that means that that blood vessel actually ruptured, and that's what caused the stroke and the damage to the brain. Another risk factor is TIAs, and so these are also referred to as mini strokes. So if a person is having multiple mini strokes, especially, that can be an increased risk factor. So with TIAs, essentially, the blood flow to the brain is temporarily becoming impaired. So it's very similar to an ischemic stroke. That's why it's called transient ischemic attack. Okay, however, this blockage is going to be shorter and more temporary, so maybe just a few minutes, okay? So essentially, there's this blood clot that blocks the artery, but then it gets pushed along through the system, and then normal blood flow eventually returns. 
Now, even though TIAs are also referred to as these small strokes or mini strokes, they should be taken just as seriously because they could be a warning sign of a larger stroke event down the road. In fact, about like one out of three people who have TIAs will then go on to have a stroke. And usually this happens within the same year. So that's important to be mindful of. Another biggie is high blood pressure, which is something that carries a huge risk. And some of these other things that I'm going to mention can also either result in high blood pressure or high blood pressure is a risk for it. So for example, one of the biggest risk factors for strokes is high blood pressure, okay? And so if your blood pressure is not being managed properly, okay, you're at an increased risk for vascular dementia. Also, heart problems like atrial fibrillation, which is essentially an irregular heartbeat, and usually it's an irregular heartbeat that is more rapid in pace, high cholesterol, diabetes, okay, especially if this diabetes is not managed, okay, blood vessel disease, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, an unhealthy diet, hardening of the arteries, major surgeries, things like that. All of these things are risk factors for developing vascular dementia. And we also know, just to throw it in, that men are more likely than women to develop vascular dementia. And unfortunately, vascular dementia is also more common in African Americans, especially African Americans who have issues with high blood pressure, hypertension, and diabetes, okay? Now, clinically, when we're talking about how vascular dementia can present, it can present similar to Alzheimer's disease, okay? But instead of forgetfulness being the main symptom you notice, it's going to be more so like changes in attention, planning, following directions or steps, their ability to make a decision. So essentially, those impairments in executive functions is what you notice kind of off the bat. These are the more primary symptoms that appear first, okay? And then you will start noticing the increased confusion and the memory difficulties. And then there will eventually be those challenges in the basic ADLs. And then they'll require more and more assist as the dementia progresses. And then in those later stages of dementia, they may lose the ability to communicate, move with intention and swallow, and then unfortunately, due to the causes of vascular dementia, the person's death is often due to a stroke or a heart attack. But this isn't always the case, okay? It's just they're at an increased risk for a stroke or a heart attack being the cause of death because of all those risk factors that may have led to the vascular dementia, okay? Now, one of the important things to know with vascular dementia that can really throw people off is that with vascular dementia, it typically progresses in this stepwise fashion. So think of like steps, okay? So instead of it being this steady progressive worsening in symptoms like a downward slope, okay, it's going to be like steps. So they'll worsen and then they'll plateau for a bit and then they'll worsen and then they'll plateau again. And usually this is because another cerebrovascular event occurred or an ischemic event occurred, okay? And so every time that happens, every time there's another reduction in that blood flow to the brain and it causes that worsening, you'll see that in the symptoms as well, essentially. But what can be even more trippy is that from day to day, there can be a significant fluctuation in symptoms that may make you question whether your partner is faking it or not. And the answer is usually no, they're not faking it. Because vascular dementia is, well, I guess vascular in nature, depending on the quality of blood flow or lack thereof to the different parts of the brain, the person's function can look a little bit different, okay? And that difference can fluctuate from day to day, depending on how that blood is flowing in the brain and what that's looking like in the different parts of the brain, okay? Now, there can also be some additional caregiver challenges if vascular dementia was in fact caused by a stroke, as there may be additional deficits when we're thinking about physical abilities. Let's say there's weakness or lack of movement to one side of the body. 
or maybe there's speech issues as well. So it's difficult to understand what your partner is saying and it's harder to determine the needs of your partner and your partner may be experiencing more frustration as well after their stroke. There could be additional issues with spatial awareness, maybe increased difficulty following commands or increased visual deficits after their stroke. So that's just something important to keep in mind, okay? So that's the gist of vascular dementia. I don't want to go too in depth for this episode, but I did want to finally introduce vascular dementia to my podcast, okay? So just as a really quick recap of vascular dementia, when we think vascular dementia, your first thought is, okay, there's something going on with the vascular system that's causing the dementia, and because it is dementia, it's something going on with the brain. So something going on with the cerebrovascular system is causing the dementia. And essentially what's happening is that there's a decreased blood flow to the brain, which is then causing damage to the blood vessels and the vascular system. And when the brain is being deprived of adequate oxygen and nutrients, you're going to get brain cell death and brain failure. And essentially that's what's happening, okay? So that pretty much wraps up this podcast episode. As I always say, I do hope that this podcast was interesting and informative and that you learned something of value. If you have any questions or anything that you would like to share, you can always send us a voice message on whatthedementia.com or you can send us an email at podcast at whatthedementia.com. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Take care, and until next time, stay strong, care on, and remember, you are not alone. Bamboo Care is always here.